My name is Landon Rain. Thank you for joining me in my studio today for episode number four of Between Layers. Today it's all about drums and I'll show you how you get from this to this using either paid or completely free gear. So let's get it. I think we all struggle a little bit when trying to make human sounding drums if we don't have an actual drum kit that we can play at home. What I see most producers do is they quantize their drums or click them in on the grid and then move them manually to make them sound more human. Personally, I don't really see the need to imitate a human sound because I'm a human myself. So my way is a little different. Um, doesn't mean it's the right way, it just means it's a different one. And real quick, I'm showing you all of this in Logic, but I put some helpful links in the description for FL and Ableton users so you guys can follow along as well. So first thing you want to do is record a rhythm and for that you can literally use whatever you want. I got some percussion stuff here, but you can clap in your kick, your snare and your hi-hat because all these recordings will later function as triggers for drum samples. So you can either choose to mix in the original recordings that you did or just leave them out completely. So I got my recorded drums right here. As you can see, I did eight bars. I usually try to do pretty long takes to avoid looping things because that just makes everything sound less monotone and more live. Here's what the raw drums sound like. We're going to start our processing by replacing or doubling our drums. This technique is usually used in modern or alternative rock where you want the overall drum groove to be more natural but the sound to be less dynamic and more in your face than it usually would. As I said, links to how you replace or double drums in FL or Ableton are in the description. Here's how it works when using Logic. So you just select any track that you want to replace or double. You go to the menu and click on track and then select replace or double drum track. This menu will pop up right here. I'm going to go through it real quick. If you want Logic to put its own stock sample in here, you want to select whatever instrument you're replacing. But if you're using your own samples anyway, you don't really have to touch that. Next is the mode. I always go with doubling so I have the chance to mix in my original recording with the double track. For the threshold, I start at zero and move the slider to the left until all the MIDI notes that I need are there. You can leave the trigger note on auto and timing offset on zero and just hit OK. Now you have a MIDI track and can use that to trigger any sample or plugin that you want. I did all of that for the kick, the snare and the hi-hat. Here's how everything sounds together with the samples. So far there's no processing at all on here, just some low cuts here and there where I don't really need that low end. I'm going to bounce out this whole thing so I can process it as a whole. So I have my bounce track right here, but there's one more thing that I'm doing before actually processing everything. This is a pretty cool home studio technique that I came up with. I didn't see this anywhere on YouTube yet and I'm using it on samples, drums, sometimes even on whole songs. So what I do is I put my microphone in front of my speakers and record them to get a natural room reverb. They did something similar back in the day at Abbey Road, for example, where they had actual reverb rooms or so-called echo chambers. They had speakers in these rooms and played anything that they wanted reverberated and just recorded the room sound with one or multiple mics. As you can hear, I don't have a very reflective room, but it's perfect for gluing things together, especially when mixing sample sounds with actual recordings like we're doing right here. So here are our drums with and without that room recording. I mix the dry and the room signal together and group them so I can process them as one. I got most of the processing that I'm about to show you from AJ Hall. He did some great videos on how he made and processed a one mic drum sample pack 
link in the description. Also link down below our amazing and free alternatives to all of the paid plugins that I'm using. I'm not going to go into too much detail with the settings. You can pause the video and copy them if you like. First, we got an EQ bringing out the highs and some of that punch in the low mids. After that, a compressor and a saturator by Bedroom Producers Block, which is completely free and sounds incredible. We got Arturia's Tape Mellow 5 for some warble and a spring reverb as a send with a low cut before the actual reverb. So it's mainly getting the snare as a trigger. So here's what everything sounds like so far. Right now I bounced out the whole thing and sent it through my tape machine, which sounds like this. Now to the final step, which really makes the drum sound in my opinion. We got Bedroom Producers Block again with a completely free plugin called Dirty Filter. It sounds absolutely insane. I'm also sprinkling some subtle vinyl noise on there and we got ourselves some drums. The drums themselves are over on Patreon already from last week's episode of Sunday Vinyls, but I just uploaded the raw tracks so you can process them yourself or Use them in your own music, however you like. You can support what I do over there. Shout out to all the people who already do. I'm not just saying that, it really, really helps me out. You can also support me right here by liking or subscribing. And as always, I really appreciate you taking your time watching this and I'll see you next Sunday. Love.